Hey y'all, it's Will the Deep Sky Dude. So back in September of 2018, I was able to go out to Los Angeles, California and do this Explore Scientific Experience at Mount Wilson. It was an amazing night. I can tell you it was one of the best nights I've ever had on a massive telescope like this. Um, a lot like the 100-inch night, we had a great night all night. A lot of cool people there, great conversation. We had guest speakers, we had good food, we had giveaways. And again, we had a clear night all night long and it was just an amazing time. We got to see some incredible objects through the 60-inch telescope, which has so much history wrapped up in it. So enough talking, let's go check it out.
audience here, so many of you guys are really, really good friends, and um, so this that makes it really special for me. And that's the, the, the mountain ridge, the highest mountain ridge in, in, in the peninsula. It, it would take you about six, or, six or six and a half hours. And it's not that long. The situation here is similar to what happened here at Mount Wilson, uh, probably in the order of what is that uh, thirty years ago. Um, in closing that refractory again, so the North Tower uh, of uh, our building is exactly the same size as this one, and the rest of the Kenwood was demolished as that observatory lasted for all of about eight years. Um, we discovered in Saturn's rings, you see this dark band here, the Cassini division. He discovered that. The proposal will put your instrument on our spacecraft, and we will send our spacecraft to where we want it to go on the trajectory we want it to go and launch on the launch vehicle that we want. And if we like it, we'll put your instrument on our spacecraft. This is different. So uh, when you yeah, when you look at the telescope, uh, Chris and I will sign you to get certificates to be signed by the TO and the SD to prove they looked through the telescope. Okay. So yeah, you got you got to be a hard ass. Don't sign it until they look through the telescope. Right? So, <laughs> literally, nobody knew the galaxy the way we think of it now, with the bulge in the middle, pinwheels. If people had ideas, guesses throughout it, nobody knew until Harlow Shapley mapped it out. Edward Hubble used the hundred inch to discover the rest of the universe. stuff inside the glass, but that's just the reflection from the silver, or sorry, the aluminum. We're just looking at the back of the mirror. So you can see the green. This was, uh, these are cast in France, same kind of glass as they make champagne bottles.
What? The Android is it? So anyways, it's been great. This is something that I want to start. Game, game.
Well, first we have to decide where we're going to go. So, I think you guys have got a few objects in mind. And so what I do is, first of all, I find out where they are in the sky. <coughs> and so, that's what basically this console here is for. And this is just software that I wrote myself. Uh, it shows me where things are in the sky, and then for any object that I choose, it'll tell me approximately which way the telescope's pointing, so I can tell, you know, is it in a dangerous location or anything like that. And it gives me an idea of how long I've got, if it's already transited, or if it's on its way down. Uh, so for instance, we have here NGC 6543, the Cat's Eye Nebula, which is a beautiful nebula, uh, which I think you're going to on the way to going to the blinking, because you want to go to the blinking planetary, yeah, right? Definitely. So the blinking planetary is right there. Yeah, it's Cygnus, right? <clears throat> yeah. And uh, once I know where that is, we've got right ascension, declination, it gives me the hour angle, azimuth, altitude, that sort of stuff. And really, then we move over to this console, which just tells me where the telescope is currently pointed. So again, right ascension, declination, hour angle, azimuth, altitude. Uh, it also gives me the dome position, so it's 187 degrees. Uh, also, is, this is kind of cool, we have a focus encoder, so the secondary mirror moves in and out. So if we put a, you know, a different kind of camera at the focus, then we've got to change the focal length. <clears throat> and this lets me go back and forth, so if we have someone with a camera, we can get to that focus really quickly, and then when they're done, we go back to visual, so I just move the focus back to where it was before. Um, and then, uh, this, uh, these buttons down here just control uh, the telescope. We have a slew speed, set speed, and then northeast, west, south, that just you know, moves in the right direction. And then the three buttons up here move the dome left, right, and stop it, and then we have focus. We do have two uh, tracking speeds, one for sidereal, which is the stars, planets, and everything else, and we have one for the moon. Because, you know, the moon goes at a slightly different speed, and so if we don't do that, because the magnification is so high, it visibly moves across the sky. Gotcha. Yeah, because you said it, you said it 50 mil eyepiece, this is at what power again? Four? 500 some 500 yeah. power. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. And then over here we got our infrared camera that lets me see what people are up to and yeah. make sure that they're out of the way when I start to move the telescope. Awesome. And that's pretty much it. We, yeah, we're right now below our deck limit. Yeah. So in, me, in order for me to go any further south, I have to lift this little thing, push that button, and then move around because we are very close to the, the lowest we can go in declination. And that's because this thing here, that is a tank of mercury. And uh, it, that's what the telescope essentially floats on. Right. As a bearing. So uh, you won't wear down the metal in your bearing, right? Exactly. And in the old days, that was completely open. And so there's this big thing of mercury there. Wow. Uh, but then they discovered, hey, mercury, that's a bad thing. So yeah. they put a shroud over it to keep it away. But now we have that, that extra thing in the telescope. can only come so far uh, in declination before it hits the shroud. Yes. 
ST4 has a camera. Literally, there's what I need to get. This is the first thing I ever used. It's hard. It's hard finding it on the channel. I know. Oh yeah. They had this huge hot spot on the back, on the corner, you know. I couldn't figure out what was wrong. <laughs> you come over to see Friends and lovers. Beautiful. Thank you. 